Hi everyone, welcome back to Asperger's from the inside. You're here with Paul for this month's Patron's Choice video. Um, actually, this month um, I'm going to do the video over three parts because it's such an amazing topic. Um, so the first part is essentially everything you need to know about the AQ test, the, the autism quotient test that you can do online. So this was a big part of my journey, my personal journey, as I know it uh, has been for many others. The first time you think, oh, maybe I might be on the spectrum and start taking it seriously, a quick Google search will come up with this 10 minute test. And then a few minutes later, you've got a score out of 50 that gives you a sense of, of whether you might be on the spectrum or not. Um, so this video will go through why was the test created? what the test actually is, how the test works, what do the results mean and not mean, um, is the test appropriate for women, there's a difference between um, the results for men and women, uh, and finally um, a summary of what it's good for and how to use it, especially for those of you uh, wondering whether you're on the spectrum or not. Uh, so uh, if you're after more information uh, you can take a look in the video description uh, and I've got a whole bunch of references and links for more information, including the original research paper uh, published in the Journal of Autism and Developmental Disorders in um, 2001. So that's where this originally came from. Okay, so to start off, if I had to um, explain the AQ test in like 10 seconds, I'd basically say it's a really great quick way of assessing the likelihood of if you're on the spectrum or not. Um, and so that means that for many of us, it's a good first step towards diagnosis. But of course, it's only a first step. I mean, it's a 10 minute online quiz. What did you expect? Um, so in this video, we'll go through some of the limitations uh, of some things to watch out for, especially what this uh, test does not mean, the results of this test. Um, so a bit of background. Uh, why was this test created? Um, According to the, the, its own paper, this test was the first brief self-administered instrument for measuring the degree to which an adult with normal intelligence has the traits associated with the autism spectrum. So it was uh, developed in 2001 uh, by Sasha Baron Cohen's cousin Simon, um, a, a British clinical psychologist um, who has done a lot of work in autism research. So even today, his work is undeniably influential and controversial. It's probably worth mentioning that 2001 was a long time ago, uh, especially in the autism world. Um, and so sometimes reading research and recommendations and what we thought we knew about autism then is, a, you know, it, it feels like, you know, reading something that medicine might have said in the Middle Ages or something. So it's it's a long time ago. We've we've learned a lot since then, um, but this test um, is still used uh, to this day, and you can still find it online. Um, so another interesting aspect of why this test was created um, was to explore the link between autistic traits uh, and scientific talent. Um, Hans Asperger is famous for saying that it seems that for success in science or art, a dash of autism is essential. Um, so interestingly, part of this um, test was to see if the autistic traits are more common in, in maths and science. Okay, so um, I've got a whole bunch of resources that you can look up as well uh, if you're looking to either do the test or, or read the original paper uh, or listen to a video that Dr. Baron Cohen has put together um, around the motivations for, for creating the test in the first place. Okay, so what is the test? The AQ test is comprised of 50 questions designed to assess five different areas social skill, attention switching, attention to detail, communication, and imagination. So uh, basically you answer each one of these 50 questions along a four point scale from definitely agree, agree, disagree, definitely disagree. Um, and then at the end, you run your answers uh, through a scoring sheet and you will get your autism quotient score somewhere between one and 50. So the higher the score, the more autistic traits you have and the higher uh, your likelihood of being on the autism spectrum. So in terms of how the test works and how accurate it is, my biggest advice is do not overthink this. 
Go online, look at the questions, go through them reasonably quickly, don't think too hard, especially try and avoid trying to think, I know what this question is ask, is trying to get, get at and um, trying to agonize over the answers or trying to interpret like the hidden meaning of what the question is going to, or is really trying to get at is not gonna help you at all. Just answer the first thing that comes to mind um, and, and you'll get a good indication uh, as the test was intended. It's not that accurate to begin with, so your score will be an indication at best uh, of whether you're likely or unlikely to be on the autism spectrum. Um, so once you have your score, you'll have a score from somewhere between one and, well, somewhere between zero and 50, actually. Um, 11 to 21 is the average score for, the most for most of the population. 22 to 25 uh, indicates that you have a, a higher than average number of autistic traits. Um, above 25, so 26 to 31, uh, they call it a borderline score. Um, and I've got 86% of people with this score um, will be correctly uh, classified as having Asperger's. Um, and the cutoff that the paper itself identified is 32. So the reason that they chose the cutoff of 32 is because 80% um, of the adults with um, Asperger's or what they called high functioning autism scored above 32. So 80% of the, the autistic people scored above 32, whereas only 2% of the neurotypical control group scored above 32, right? So this means that if you scored over 32, you are either in that 80%, right? Pretty likely that you're on the spectrum um, or the 2% of people who are not on the spectrum and still score above that score. Um, so I just wanna mention here that this also means that 20% or one in five people who score below this cutoff are still on the spectrum. So if you, if you had a room full of 10 people on the spectrum, at least two, well, about two of them would score under 32. So what does this actually tell us? It tells us um, that this test is much better at telling you you are autistic than it is uh, at ruling out if you're not autistic. So, right, let's take another look at another example. Um, anyone who, if you scored 38 or above, right, 40% of, 43% of autistics scored above 38. However, none, of the 174 neurotypical participants scored above 38. So if you're getting a score in the high four, in the 40s, especially in the high 40s, you can be pretty confident that it's worth looking into, are you on the spectrum or not? Um, however, if you get a, a low score, I think when I did this, I got a, an ambiguous score, something like 30 or something. It must have been less than 32, but only slightly less. And I, rem maybe, and I remember thinking, well, that's a bit useless. Official internet diagnosis, probably, right? That's not very helpful. Um, so yeah, this test is much better at giving you a strong indication that you are on the spectrum if you score highly than it is of, of ruling it out if you score somewhere in the middle. So another big question is, is this AQ test um, appropriate for women? Uh, it's, it's well known that many, many more uh, men are diagnosed with autism than women. Um, and actually they did look at that. They had a, a male control group and a female control group. And what they found is that actually, yes, men tended to score higher on the AQ test, indicating more autistic traits, more, more of these measurable autistic traits, um, than the female group. So it makes sense that if you're autistic and female, you are likely to score lower than, than uh, an equivalent male doing this test. However, the difference is not huge, which means that the test is still applicable for women. And especially if we think about how accurate this test is in general, I mean, the, the, the results you're gonna get is either highly likely, a little bit likely or not very likely. So. Um, that means that if you're a woman doing this test, you're probably gonna get about as useful answer um, as, as a man doing this test. And your guess is as good as mine as to where someone of non-binary gender, which is statistically relatively common uh, in the autistic population, uh, how that would affect these results. Uh, but in general, um, there are some gender differences, but 
not huge gender differences. Okay, so with all of that information, what conclusions can we come to about uh, the usefulness of this test? Uh, essentially, the test is really useful, it's a really good starting point for a conversation with a doctor, especially if you've, you've scored highly, um, but it's not a diagnosis. It was never intended to be a diagnosis. Um, they were hoping to be able to use it as a very, very quick screening tool, uh, which uh, in my opinion, it, it's pretty good for that. We also found out that it's, the test is much better at giving you confidence that you are on the spectrum rather than giving you confidence that you're not on the spectrum. So what that means is if you scored very highly on this test, I would strongly suggest you consider the possibility that you are on the spectrum uh, and look into the matter further. Whether that's an official diagnosis or not is up to you. I've actually got a video on the pros and cons of official diagnosis versus self-diagnosis. Um, but I would encourage you to continue that journey and at least to find an answer for you. Um, similarly, incredibly low scores. I actually had a friend of mine take this test and score one out of 50. It's pretty clear that she's not on the spectrum. If you're, if you're scoring less than about 20, it, you, you can be reasonably confident um, that you're unlikely to be on the spectrum. However, a score between 20 and 30 really doesn't tell you very much at all. Um, so, it's, it was worth your time to find out. Um, and I would encourage you, if you think you're on the spectrum, then keep going until you find an answer that's satisfying to you as to whether you are or not. Sometimes you go to a, a professional uh, and they give you an answer and it feels like it resonates. And sometimes you go to a professional and you feel like they've just dismissed you and haven't taken you seriously. In that case, you're gonna wanna seek another opinion or at least keep going until you find an answer you're happy with. Um, so anyway, I'll talk a lot more about that next week um, in the second part of this Patron's Choice video. Um, are you undiagnosed autistic? How to tell if you're on the autism spectrum? Um, so until then, uh, take care. Thanks for watching. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Um, and I'll see you again next time. Okay, bye.